Hello, this is Professor David Bishai, and I'm going to be presenting in this lecture how to use stock and flow principles for simulation. I also want to thank my uh, co-instructor, Dr. Ligia Pina. The outline of this lecture is to come in three sections. First, we're going to talk about why stock and flow are the basis of system dynamics modeling. And then we'll have a section on stocks, and then a section on the flow and control variables. So here is section A, where we talk about the stock and flow as the basis of system dynamics. And this picture of Pinocchio sort of symbolizes why we're talking this way. We are always going to start with some rough sketched idea, and that will be a causal loop diagram. But if we want to bring that causal loop diagram to life, the same way Tinkerbell brings Pinocchio to life, we want to have a computer simulation. And it's really the case that a simulation enterprise is going to be easier and the equations are going to be more orderly when one has gone through a causal loop diagram and defined which elements of the diagram are stocks and which elements are flows. Let me illustrate this with a, a simple population model. At the top of the slide is a set of arrows that says these three things are related. It's true that births and the size of the population and deaths are all related. And in a causal loop diagram, one gets the basic positive feedback loop where the more population, the more births, and the same negative feedback loop where the more deaths, the less population. So these two loops are clearly the case, but something bad about the causal loop diagram is that it makes no categorical distinction between what is a birth, what is a person, and what is a death. And in fact, these are incredibly different concepts. One is born for just about a few seconds, and one is dying, really giving up the ghost for just a matter of seconds. But one is a person for 70 or 80 years. These are very different things. And it's a better plan to know that the population is a very durable type of a concept, and the process of being born or dying is not a durable thing, and it is best called a rate. So the stock and flow diagram at the bottom pays attention to the differences between what is a population, what is a birth rate, and what is a death rate. And it diagrams this using different symbols for the idea of a flow rate. And you can see that stopcock symbol in the stock and, and flow diagram at the bottom. So that makes it a lot more clear about what is what in, in our model. Causal loop diagrams makes it hard to instruct the computer. If all one has is the diagram at the top, one has a general notion that population should be bigger if birth is big, a general notion that birth should be bigger if the population is big, etc. It's really not quite an equation. But if we have a stock and flow diagram, it directly suggests a computer code, and the basic demographic uh, identity comes right out of the model, that the population at time t is the population at time t minus 1, plus births in the last period, minus deaths in the last period. The equation comes right out of the model. That makes it so much easier to move from a diagram to computer code, and that makes software like Vensim able to simply look at our diagrams and know what equations we're thinking from the graphical approach to modeling. So on methodology, when we're using stock and flow diagrams, we have to use different symbols for the different relationships we want to model. And there are essentially four types of entities in a stock and flow diagram. There is a box or level variable, diagram by a box. Then there is a rate, which describes changes in quantities over time. And one uses a, a stopcock arrow with those little kissing triangles involved to show us that that's a rate. The third entity is a constant or parameter, and those are auxiliary variables, and one can just write them into the screen and sometimes draw them inside a circle. And finally, there are connectors, which are how these auxiliary or control variables influence the other parts of the system. The control variables don't flow, they don't move mass around the model, but they do move information, and information is important in regulating the system. So that gets us started with our basic understanding of what we're doing with a stock and flow diagram. In the next section, we'll talk about stocks in particular.